The Lord of all Vetting Lords. President Joseph Ejercito Estrada. Now I'm here to testify that uh, I came here personally to accuse the Lord of all vetting lords, no less than the President of the Republic of the Philippines, Joseph Herzio Strada. Isang simpleng away ng magkumpare na nauwi sa pinakamalaki at pinakabakasaysayang paglilitis sa bansa. Ito ang impeachment trial ni Pangulong Joseph Ejercito Estrada, ang tao na unahang Pangulo sa buong Asia na humarap sa ganitong uri ng pagsubok. Report of the Committee on Justice to the House on the verified complaint for impeachment against His Excellency President Joseph Ejercito Estrada. In case the verified complaint of the members of the House, the, the same shall constitute the articles of impeachment and trial by the Senate shall forbid proceed. Mr. Speaker, I rise to make the point of order. Endorsement of the complaint and ministerial to endorse it to the Senate for trial in the same manner as an approved bill. Accordingly, the Secretary General is immediately directed to transmit to the Senate the impeachment complaint constituting the articles of impeachment together with the verified resolution of endorsement. Resolution is suspended. Sa Senado ng Republika ng Pilipinas, natuon ang pansin ng sambayanan. Entitled in the matter of the impeachment of His Excellency Joseph Ejercito Estrada, President of the Philippines, for bribery, corrupt and corruption, betrayal of public trust, and culpable violation of the Constitution. At sa loob ng mayigit isang buwan, saksi ang buong bansa sa pamamagitan ng live coverage ng radyo at telebisyon sa paglikha ng kasaysayan. Disyembre 7, taong 2,000, ang unang araw ng impeachment trial. Sinimula na sa Senado ang mahabang proseso ng pagpapatansig kay Estrada, batay sa apat na articles of impeachment na ipinasa ng Kongreso. Naging madamdami ng mga opening speeches ng mga prosecutor at ng defense panel. We, the House prosecutors, are tasked to fulfill a duty. It is a grave duty. Grave because we are asking the judges that Joseph Ejercito Estrada, whom we elected as president, be removed from the presidency at once. Joseph Ejercito Estrada has violated the oath previously mentioned by Congressman Belmonte had violated the law not once, not twice, but regularly like clockwork. When Joseph E. Hersto Estrada took his oath, high noon of June 30, 1998, except for his name, he violated every word of his oath. That is why the House has impeached him. That is why the Senate must convict him. We want you to see this signature. Study very closely. You will notice, look at the lower portion which says an arrow. Look at the signature. Examine it carefully. 
it purports. Then look at the signature of the president in a 500 peso bill, which is on top. You need not be an expert to see the similarity. The name may be different, but there are unmistakable signs that the signature in that check is the signature of the handwriting of the President of the Philippines. Imagine the President of the Philippines maintaining a fictitious account. How far can he go? Or should he go? Look at it closely. We don't want to leave that matter. Because that is how low the President has gone down in bastardizing and prostituting even our banking system. The Honours Joseph Ejercito Estrada willfully, con consciously and maliciously violated that sacred oath by his acts of committing bribery, graft and corruption in all its forms, betrayed public trust, and culpably violated the Constitution. Marami na ang kasalanan ni Presidente Estrada sa bayan. Malaki na ang perwisyo na idinunot niya sa sambayanan. Kaya't mabuti pa mag-resign na si Presidente Estrada para sa kabutihan ng bansa. Many of us here present will doubtless recall the story of a man of ancient Rome named Julius Caesar, whom the masses admired and wanted to be the leader of their nation. He was assassinated by a group of plotters. Today, 2,000 years after that tragic event, we take part in these impeachment proceedings to pass judgment on another leader, Joseph Ejercito Estrada. We consider many this a challenge because to us this impeachment case does not only involve defending the honor, the integrity, and the dignity of President Estrada. It also involves preserving the mandate of more than 10 million Filipinos who voted for him. Ang sabi po ni Presidente sa akin, eh, oh, kilala mo naman si Governor Simpson. I said, yes sir, I know him already. Oh, uh, tulungan mo siya, siya ang mamamahala ngayon sa wedding dito sa Luzon. Tulungan mo siya at uh, mag-coordinate kayong dalawa. This is the Caporte. We requested for a subpoena juice statum for you to produce the original of the ledger. Ito po ang original copy ng listahan. We were requested that there be an interpreter upon the request of the witness because you would like to testify in Tagalog. The testimony, is that in Filipino or Tagalog? Tagalog. Because if it is Filipino, I understand that the stenographers can take down the notes in Filipino being a national language. I ask you, sir, if you could take a look at these documents, which I will now hand to you, and tell us whether you can identify the existence of these documents, sir, particularly Exhibits 3 and 4. I am once again uh, presenting to you, uh, Mr. Witness, John Lastimoso, the said uh, document, and uh, would you kindly uh, tell us which came first? This document showing that you reported to the President your accomplishments on illegal gambling and the meeting with the President wherein he instructed you to coordinate and help Governor Simpson in the illegal gambling operations. This letter was uh, is was ahead of the meeting that took place in Malacanang. I'm Antonio Di Prieto.
Ako po ngayon ay nanunungkulan bilang Presidential Assistant for Vigal Affairs, Your Honor. During the Senate hearing, the Senate Blue Ribbon Committee hearing, you were implicated as having received waiting money. Were you not? Uh, I was included by Governor Simpson, that's true, Your Honor. And what was your answer? I, I mean, as it is, I totally denied the, all the allegations, Your Honor. Uh, there has been no indication yet that the witness qualifies as a hostile witness or an unwilling witness or an adverse party witness. Mm -hmm. And the tendency of the questions are all in the form of uh, crossing, actually, the witness confronting the witness with documents. So I think it's improper uh, as far as the rules of evidence are concerned. May I be allowed to answer? Uh, I'm laying the predicate to declare this witness as a hostile witness. Without that, how can I declare this witness, request for declaration of this witness as a hostile witness? That is witness? why nobody can prevent uh, the declaration of a witness as a hostile witness, and uh, the court uh, will uh, uh, might make the necessary ruling. But you should first lay the appropriate predicate or basis, therefore. That's it, Your Honor. That is what I'm doing. If, an, uh, if you know of a fact oh. that is adverse to the President, and since you have taken an oath to tell the truth and nothing but the truth, would you reveal that adverse fact against the President? I will always tell the truth, Your Honor. Okay, thank you. What check was that? Uh, ito po, uh, isa rin sa mga cheque na galing po kay Mr. Anton Pieto. Uh, remittance po niya sa wetting collections po niya sa Bicol para kay Presidente Estrada through Governor Javid Singson, Your Honor. Ano ba yung kinalalagyan ka mo ng pera? Yung black bag po, Your Honor. Huh? Black bag. Black? Na bag, yung bag. parang attached case. Eh, ano ba yung bag? Canvas bag ba yan o... O shopping bag, o atase case, o anong ba? Klaseng bag? Uh, canvas po yung may ano pa. Parang ganun po, pero yun may mga bulsa-bulsa. Sa uh, kamay gulong po yun. Yun sa kay ko, wala pong gulong, walang bulsa-bulsa. Walang gulong. Which measures okay. about uh, can we 8 question? inches. Do we have the we... tape uh, measure already? I think we better get a measurement. Uh, uh, mas mas uh, mataba po ito, Your Honor. Uh, teka, sandali, sandali, sandali. sandali. Pagintay ka lang, sandali. Yung bang waiting eh, alam mo eh. Hindi ba alam mong illegal yan? Yes, Your Honor. Hindi yung pagkukolekta sa waiting, labag yan sa batas. Yes, Your Honor. Hindi yung tumutulong sa pagkukolekta na nanggagaling sa waiting, hindi gumagawa ng kalabagan sa batas, hindi ba? Yes, Your Honor. Ito ba medyo kinabahan na ginawa mo yun? Uh, kinabahan po ako pero sino ba naman po ako para, kasi kay Presidente naman po yung wedding, sino naman po ako para ano po? Kayong tatlo na nangalian. Yes, Your Honor. Yung isa, kumain ng iced tea. Uminom po, hindi po kamain, Your Honor. Ha? Anong ininom? Uminom po ng iced tea, hindi po na kinain, Your Honor. Uh, ah, oo. Oh. Kasi po itong mga sinasabing memorandum, ito po ipananggay ito sa Presidente. We are trying to insulate him because we receive a lot of flack from uh, civic sectors, from the church, about the proliferation wetting. And naturally, we have to make it appear na meron kaming operation. Pero iba po yung mandi dito at iba po yung instruction sa akin na verbal. You participated with your full knowledge and consent in an attempt to mislead the Filipino public about the state of the police campaign against illegal wetting. Is that what you're saying? Uh, Sinunod mo ang utos ni Pangulong Estrada? Sinunod ko lang pang utos ng Presidente. Ah, edi kung hindi na pala nahinto ang illegal wetting, dahilan sa kagustuhan mo na rin. Is that hindi what you're po, saying? Hindi po. Ako po'y sumusunod lamang sa utos, Sir Rono. These are the copies of microfilm copies of the checks that went through the clearing house and there are six of them so uh, what unusual features if any do you find in those uh, uh, six uh, checks well upon closer examination of the checks themselves uh, they are all cashiers checks all six of them and all of them are payable to either cash or bearer 
and all of them are in substantial amounts. And looking farther at the back of the check, that the bank, Equitable PCI Bank, has refused to honor the subpoena as issued subpoena and subpoena duces tecum for the deposition that we would like to take. Mr. Chief Justice, this is obviously without any doubt a naked and uh, a blatant obstruction of justice, Mr. Chief Justice. We draw attention to the fact that no such notice was ever was given to us which would be considered sufficient by rational standards. Because we received notice barely 20 minutes before the scheduled taking of the deposition. And if my memory does not fail me, Your Honor said, well, we will uh, allow you to go into the, the matter. We will recall the pr proceedings. That was the agreement yesterday. Yes. Now we are referring to <laughs> these matters which are subject of the of the deposition taking that I was speaking of. Therefore, we, we have had no opportunity to to make known our protests or our objections to the deposition taking on the ground, for example, of materiality, of relationship of the proposed evidence to any fact in issue. Prosecution seeks the implementation of that uh, mandate by this court. And we reiterate. I don't know if I heard your honor correctly. We say you are the prosecution, you are asking for one penalty? I am not the prosecution. Uh, I that's am. what I thought you said. So I'm sorry, but I, that's what I heard. Anyway. Well, you heard wrongly. I appeal to the record. You said prosecution. The prosecution. As I pointed out, it is not so much the matter of notice, but the matter involved. Well, sir, well, both senators don't gloat at me, <laughs> because uh, I will not allow it. Well, I am looking at you. Yeah, okay. To immediately deliver in a sealed envelope all the documents covered by the subpoena dosis tecum, which are namely A, the application to open account, specimen signature cards, ledger, and such other documents pertaining to account number 0001102594-4 and B, microfilm copy of equitable bank Binondo Juan Luna branch, check 0110-714951, issued on October 5, 1999. For this purpose and to ensure the security of these documents, the Senate Secretary, accompanied by a representative of the prosecution and a representative of the defense, should immediately proceed to get these documents in a sealed envelope from Attorney Robert Abad or whoever is now in custody at the place where the deposition taking is supposed to be taking place at this very hour. The sealed envelope shall be signed or initial by the Senate Secretary, by the representative of the prosecution, and by the representative of the defense to be forthwith delivered to the Senate President. It will not be sealed envelope, shall not be opened by anyone until the issue of proper notice and availability of Republic Act number 1405 shall have been resolved. In the meantime, the parties are enjoined to submit the respective memoranda on these two issues, which shall be uh, argued uh, on Friday at 2 o'clock uh, in the afternoon.
Kate Makare Egg from Channel News Asia. Sir, while you have already said that you were unaware of the transaction at the time, what motive do you ascribe to Governor Singson in insisting on giving you the 200 million and Attorney Serapio in accepting it? President Estrada, pardon, can you repeat your question? Makare Egg. Sir, why do you believe Governor Singson insisted on giving you the 200 million and why did your lawyer accept the 200 million? President Estrada, well, I don't know if it was good faith or bad faith. At any rate, siguro gustong magpalakas. Anyway, being corporate secretary, maybe Attorney Serapio accepted it in good faith. Did you ever at any point in time seek to initiate an investigation against Governor Luis Singson for his alleged involvement in wetting an illegal gambling activity? President Estrada, well, you know, a president has so many work to do. That is the duty of our Philippine National Police or the Secretary of Interior and Local Government. Conrad Muller. Yes, but you, Mr. President, have admitted to knowledge that Governor Luis Singson was allegedly involved in illegal gambling. Hence the question about whether you might personally have initiated some steps to be taken. President Estrada. As I have said that, I already ordered the police to go all out against all gambling lords and illegal gambling. I cannot go and file charges to all these gambling lords. That is the duty of our Philippine National Police. Originally po, ang pangalan po talaga niya is Fountain Blue, spelled as F-O-U-N-T-A-I-N-B-L-E-A-U. Uh, kaya lang po, uh, tumawag po si Mr. Jesus Pineda, nag-aaway-aaway po kasi hindi ho nila alam. Spelling pa lang ho ng corporation, pangalan ng corporation, hindi na, na hindi ho nila sila magkasundo. Sabi po niya sa akin, uh, sabihin mo, tanggalin natin yung letter U kasi magiging 13 letters yan at ayaw ni Presidente Estrada yan. Ibig sabihin na niyo, Your Honor, 5 billion, as yung salunga, binigay ng linggo kay Pangulo Estrada, Your Honor. Uh, ano po ba ibig sabihin nung... Pakiulit nga po, ano po ba ibig sabihin ng AS? Uh, Joseph Estrada, Your Honor. Kay Presidente po yan, Your Honor. Hindi po ba yung AS eh, ibig sabihin ng Asyong Salonga? Yung nga po, Your Honor. Asyong Salonga ang uh, code name niya, Your Honor. Dito sa ledger na ito, Your Honor. Mr. Witness, uh, pwede po ba ninyo sumahin yung uh, lahat ng figures sa uh, nasa ilalim ng exhibit EE1, November 1 to 15, at titingnan natin kung ito ay tumutugma ng 12 million 900. Pero lahat ng binanggit na ni ni niya rito ay eh, natatanda niya kahit na matagal baluat ng ginawa itong mga dokumento na ito. At ako ay nagtataka na doon sa RC ay hindi niya natatandaan yung bagay na yun. Initial lang po kasi yun, Your Honor. Hindi ko matandaan. Yung by Rene Cruz? Hindi ko alam, Your Honor. Yung addition ko po, Your Honor, 12,750. Oh, sabagat din, may error po. Ito yung uh, sum summary dito, 13,750. Tama po, Your Honor. Ah, ngayon, eh... Di may error lahat itong computation na ito. Pwede po bang tingnan ninyo yung buong dokumento para malaman natin ang mga errors ninyo sa mga entrada nito? Ang chie-check ko po, madalas your honor, yung total. Siguro po, nagkamera dito yung mga nag-entra dito, your honor. Sa makatwid, hindi kayo ang gumagawa nito. Hindi, your honor, pinagagawa ko ito. Tinatanong ko lang po, kung kay, eh, sa makatwid, sa answer po ninyo, hindi kayo ang gumagawa. Ako gumagawa, your honor, pinatransfer pina ko ito dito sa every... End of demand, linilipat dito, Your Honor. Pero yung total, ang uh, linilista ko, yun lang tinitignan ko, Your Honor. Pwede po ba, revisyahin ninyo ulit, titignan nyo, marami pong error ito eh. Would you need time for that? Oh. Would you need time then? Yes, Your Honor. Oh, pwede sana makahiram na lang ko yung uh, calculator na may papel, Your Honor, para ma mas madaling ma-check yun yung may ating machine na may papel. Para ma-check well, kung tama. Did he change or suggest to the prosecution? Alikong bisa, nagkakamali ka yes. sa pinto dito sa ano eh. 
I just want to point out, Mr. Mr. Chief Justice, I am just pointing to the witness that that document is full of error. That's all I want to say. Okay, then, uh, uh, Attorney Marcelo, may proceed. I just want to draw attention to the fact that there seem to be attempts now to present evidence of other wrongdoing of His Excellency the President, which are not included in the complaint or information for uh, articles of impeachment, which is why I urge that these rules on materiality be applied in strictness. Otherwise, that evidence would not only be immaterial, but would produce unfair prejudice to the respondent. We haven't done, we haven't won any headway. Not much. We have the evidence if we, we do not have access to this evidence. But we know that somewhere there, it's there. We can see it. But we have to get it. And we need the help of this court. We would beg now that we see what is inside that bag. Because our contention is that that account is the account of the President of the Philippines. Now, the documents there will prove it. Can you tell the Honorable Court how many times uh, in that particular, uh, these particular bills was the call made to Malacanang? or the, the uh, presidential residence? Uh, it's 22, 21 times, Sir Honor. Ako po yung tumatanggap ng mga deliveries, ng mga wetting collections for the President, Your Honor. How do you know that these wetting collections were uh, for the President? Sinabi po ni Governor Singson, then later on, kinonfirm din ho ni Mrs. Rica Forte, Your Honor. How do you know that, uh, what else, if you know? why uh, these uh, wedding collections were for the president? Uh, kadalasan ho, pag nagdadala po si Governor Singson, sa office po siya naghahanda ng pera, uh, tinutulungan po namin siya, ako at saka si Emma Lim, para magbilang at ilagay po dun sa black bag, Your Honor. What black bag? Isa pong bag na ginagamit ni Governor Singson para sa mga pera na dinadala niya, Your Honor. Where did this money come from? Galing po sa mga wetting collections, Your Honor, for the President. Alam niyo po ba kung ano nangyari dito po sa lahat-lahat po nito na dinipositor na galing po sa wetting collection? Yung balance po, dalawang beses po sinabi pa ng Estrada na ilipat yung mga balance kay Atty. Policarpio. Nung una po sinabi sa Malacanang, kaming apat nila Leoranda Recaporte, Your Honor. Tapos sa uh, uh, pangalawa, sinabi sa akin at uh, sinabi ko rin kay Recaporte ulit na transfer na yung balance kay Atty. Serapio. So tinawagan ko si Presidente. So ano po nangyari nung tinawagan niyo si Presidente? Sabi niya, eh, kasi pare, nung nag-uusap tayo, eh, magulong isip ko at saka hindi ko nasikasyo masyado. Alam mo naman problema natin, yung abo sayap, saka problema ko kay First Lady. Uh, mabuti pa, yun sinabi lahat ito, pare, sabi niya. Ano po ang naging sagot ninyo? Eh, kako, eh, eh, gusto rin. Gusto ko rin, pero palagay ko huli na dahil nakalabas na ako eh. This morning, a group of some 40 people staged a rally in front of my house at 29 Malindog Street, UP Village, Quezon City. They arrived in a vehicle and, armed with bullhorns, engaged in loud, discordant, and angry chanting. They even banged on my gate and threw objects against it. As far as I could make out, they were trying to force and intimidate me as a senator judge to render a vote of conviction in this impeachment trial. This is my respectful manifestation for the record without prejudice to further legal action afforded, me by, afforded by law to me and all other senator judges, which I shall study in order that there will be no repetition of this pathetic incident. Ano po ang binigay niyo kay President Estrada? Uh, yung uh, collection ng wetting, Your Honor, na parte nung uh, binibigyan namin madalas sa kanya, 
na cash binigay ko po sa Pige Barra, Your Honor, yung protection money. No, ibinigay niyo po ito. Sino po ang nando doon kung meron man? Miss Gia Gomez, Your Honor, saka si JB, Your Honor. Kung alam, anak nila. Kung alam niyo po, pakisabi nga po kung sino po ang nakatira sa, sa bahay na yan, sa Pige Barra. Si Gia Gomez, Your Honor, saka si JB, na anak ni Presidente, Your Honor. Sino po ba si Gia Gomez, kung alam nyo? Isa po sa pinakamamahal ng Pangulong Strada, Your Honor. So the transcript goes like this. Deo Makalma, alam nyo po, Mr. President, meron din pong binabanggit itong, uh, nabanggit din po itong si Attorney Ed Serapio, na dito sa hearing sa Blue Ribbon Committee, ano po ang uh, alam nyo o alam nyo upang Sinasabing napunta sa kanya ang dalawang daang milyon daw, Mr. President. Sagot po ni Ginoong Estrada, ah, totoo yan. Ah, yan, ah, yan nga ang ating ititistigo. Eh, yan ang sinasabi ni Mr. Simpson na yung daw ay binibigay o binigay niya sa akin, yung perang yan ay intak yan sa nasa bangko. It was also authorized by our um, bank president together the pertinent records and documents regarding the various deposits of Ms. Yolanda Ricaforte. So you could not reach the conclusion that the person, Yolanda Ricaforte, were five different persons living in the same address? No. It... <laughs> Hindi ba? Yes, Your Honor. Hindi naman siguro ang limang taong parehong pangalan na nakatira sa parehong address. Yes, Your Honor. This is a duplicate copy of the cashier's check that we issued to Mrs. Yolanda Ricoforte with check number 13064, dated April 13, 2000, for 91 million pesos. There is a box at the middle portion uh, of the left uh, side. Uh, it says received and kanino ba yung firma na yan? Yes, it was received by Mrs. Yolanda Ricoforte. Bakit mo pirma itong, uh, bakit mo nasabi na pirma ni Yolanda Ricoforte ito at saka yung mga earlier documents that you have identified? Uh, because she signed the documents in my presence. <laughs> Ngayon, nung dumating na yung sinasabi mo, sinabi dumating na yung pera at sinakay na sa kotse, uh, ano kung sumunod na nangyari? Uh, tumuloy na kami, Ron, oh, pero request niya na doon na ako sasakay sa kanya. So, punta na tayo kay Pangulong Strada, sabi niya, Tumuloy na ako kami sa Fox Street, Your Honor. Nakapasok ka ba uh, doon sa bahay ni President Estrada? Nakakapasok ako ron, Your Honor, dahil haros araw-araw noon na uh, nagpupunta ako ron, Your Honor. Pagpasok mo, itong okasyon na ito, ano ho nangyari? Uh, pagpasok ko, Your Honor, sa sala, na uh, unang-una uh, na salubong ko, Your Honor, sa living room si First Lady Loy Esercito Estrada at uh, nagpasalamat agad. Ang sabi niya, ah, nako, Chabit, maraming salamat at talagang kailangan namin dahil katatapos lang eleksyon. Ano ho ang pagkaintindi niyo dun sa kung bakit nagpapasalamat si First Lady? Na natanggap nila yung pera, Your Honor, dahil wala naman kaming ibang dala kundi yung pera, Your Honor. Ano ho ulit itong pera ang pinag-uusapan ninyo? Yung 130 million, Your Honor, na galing sa aming probisya, galing sa stock, excise tax ng sigarilyo na na-release na galing sa Republic Act 7171, Your Honor. It depends. Is withdrawing our motion for reconsideration dated December 19, 2000 of the extended order of the presiding officer dated December 18, 2000. This is the signature card of the certain Jose Velarde, uh, whose specimen signature appears herein. Three, three of them, three specimen signatures. The clerk was generally a lot stricter with, with, with a normal, shall I say, locator in clerk. We would normally require strictly that they apply with proper documentation of what they were importing. But we did allow the importation of equipment for the Fontainebleau Casino to proceed even before f such formalities had been accomplished because the message was very clear from Malacanang. This is a, 
high priority project that needed to get done very quickly. In the course of the negotiations, Atong Ang became extremely aggressive, I would say, extremely aggressive um, in his manner and in what he was negotiating. He demanded that he acquire 70% ownership in Fontana. And uh, what was the uh, reaction of uh, the other party, Robin Tan? Robin couldn't understand why he need why Atong needed to get 70% of of uh, Fontana, and he he asked, I mean, why do you need to have have this much? And uh, Atong's reply was, "Because the kalahati is 70% of it for the president." I am Rosario Salcedo Bautista, Senior Manager of Diliman Matalino Branch Equitable PCI Bank. On November 22, when she appeared again, bringing with her two uh, checks amounting to 70 million, is a uh, William Gachelian check in the amount of 35 million, dated November 20, 1999, drawn against PCI Bank uh, head office. At the dorsal part of the check, uh, it is was indicated account number way to be deposited, which is 2880237-0 and the bank endorsement. Whose, whose account is that? That account belongs to Rica, Yolanda Ricoforte. Exhibit triple uh, L 23 is also a uh, William Gatchelian check in the amount of 35 million dated November 20, 1999. And uh, it's a majority uh, leader first. I should recognize the permission of uh, Prosecutor Moreno. All we heard was the name and the. Uh, uh, so we didn't hear the address and the other person's circumstances. Uh, maybe uh, Council Thank would want her to tell us a little bit more about herself. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Majority Leader. I also heard somebody uh, by back asking whether the witness is single or married. I'm Mary Their Honor, and I'm a resident of 310 Benavida Homes, Maryville, Paranaque. We are willing to stipulate that all of the transactions uh, referred to in the exhibits which these witnesses I, I have, I has identified all took place. We would appreciate that. Uh, we certainly appreciate that, Mr. Chief Justice. And if I may add one more thing, if the defense panel would be willing to accept that the Mrs. Yolanda Ricaforte, that uh, this... Uh, the Honorable uh, the witness knows the owner of this account is the same Yolanda Ricaforte who appeared uh, during the Blue Ribbon Committee hearings. No, not during the Blue Ribbon Committee, but uh, as a witness for the prosecution and who appeared before the Senate Impeachment Court. Were there any discussions between you and <coughs> Mrs. Ricaforte with respect to that uh, initial deposit? I asked her what her business are. And she told me that she's connected with Phil East Travel, which is located at the second floor of Manila Midtown, just in front of my branch. Ito po yung 8,900,000 na, na pinlays ni Mrs. Yolanda Ricaforte sa reverse repurchase agreement po namin. When she approached my, my, my table, uh, I asked her, uh, what did she want? So she told me she want to open uh, an account. I asked my new accounts clerk to, as to assist her in, in filling up the forms, like the account opening form and the two signature cards. And then she presented uh, a check for initial deposits in the amount of 10 million, 7,077.78 7 plus an additional cost of Cold cost of one million four hundred thousand. And how many accounts uh, has Mrs. Ricaforte opened with your branch? Uh, she opened a total of four accounts, Your Honor. So, Mrs. Ricaforte bought, uh, brought with her to your branch a total of four million cash? Yes, Your Honor. Pero tinanong ko sa kanya kung ano po yung business niya. Anong sagot niya? Uh, sabi niya po, yung business niya is uh, she is engaged in prone farming in Iloilo. On March 15, 2000, Ms. Yolanda T. Ricaforte walked in in my branch early morning and then she came directly to me 
and asked and, and told me that she's also a valued client of other branches of Equitable. So she wanted to try my branch, that's why she wanted to open an account also with me. I asked her what is her, what is her business or what is she into and she told me she's a businesswoman. Exhibit LLL-29 was the check deposited by Ms. Yolanda Tirica Forte in my branch last March 16, 2000. When I saw that the check was issued by Governor Luis Chavit Singson, I asked her what is her relationship with Governor Luis Chavit Singson because I also come from Began. And then uh, what did uh, she tell you? She did not actually uh, answer me immediately. She just smiled at me. And then when I, I noticed that she doesn't want to answer me, I just answered for her and I told her, almost probably you have some uh, business construction with, her, with uh, Governor Singson. And she, said, and, and she answered me, yes. The idea is that this witness will attest that Joseph Ejerzo Estrada, the president, is Jose Velarde. Your Honours, please, that we present this witness now and she can be cross-examined later by the defense. But her testimony is the best security that she will have for her life. But whatever the characterization of the proceedings may be, these proceedings can only mean anything to the nation and to the, and to the country if they are fair. So it is our respectful prayer, Your Honours, please that presentation of this witness be deferred until such time as the evidence for Article 2 is appropriate and at that time the court, in our view, will have to deal squarely with the question of whether evidence of this nature is covered by the Articles of Impeachment. Ang testigos na ito ay magsasabi daw na si Jose Bilarde ay si Presidente Estrada. Abay mabigat po. Kung yan po ang ititestigos, sa palagay ko ay mahirap pigilin. Sa palagay ko ay lahat tayo bilang impeachment court na katungkulan natin marinig. Sapagat ang Jose Bilarde sa naikwento na kay admissible kay hindi Ang Jose Velarde, nagbigay daw ng 142 million. And so if it, the, the, the main objective is to find out the truth, let us not be technical. Let us allow the witness to testify. For after all, the defense has the weapon of objections. So therefore, we must know the truth. And therefore, fairness to the senator judges, fairness to the truth, fairness to the Filipino people, fairness to history dictates that we should allow the witness to sit and will listen. And the entire nation will listen to what she will say. And let us judge after the statement is made as to whether indeed this deserves the attention, this deserves the consideration of this court. Thank you, words, Mr. President. Thank you, Ariana. The people have the right to information on issues affecting the President. Mr. Chief Justice, the whole nation is watching. And I believe that we must respect the right of the Filipino people to know the truth, minus the legalese, minus the technicalities. I believe that this is of utmost national interest. Salamat po. If the main reason is just to be able to, to put on record what the witness wants to say, then a deposition is the best 
uh, way of doing it. But if it's not really the reason, and the reason is just to put that person on the stand, and uh, over Christmas, eh, walang pinag-usapan kundi ito, dahil hindi nakahanda yung cross. Eh, iba ho ang impact nun. Uh, lahat ho ng klaseng uh, issues, maaari natin magiging dito, but I, but I, I say, uh, I, I, we should be cautious of this, uh, Mr. Chief Justice. Thank you, Your Honor. Mr. Chief Justice, I am ready to listen to the witness. Thank you. So therefore, if we could allow the opening of the envelope the other day, Mr. Chief Justice, to find out whether that account at Equitable or Equitable Bank is indeed connected to the articles of impeachment, then we must, by the same reason, allow now the witness that the prosecutors would like to present today to be heard to find out whether indeed that specimen signature card is has, uh, I mean, if she can complete the information that we had sought originally to find on the specimen signature card. Thank you, Mr. Thank Chief. Thank you, Your Honor. That the best form of protection is still for any witness or president anonymity and expediency. This then, for the record, Mr. Chief Justice, is the Senator Judge's contribution to the issue of security. Thank you. Thank you, Your Honor. But somehow, we have to see to it that if both the prosecution and the defense want this, they can do this among themselves, present this witness after our Christmas break. There is no rule that we are not uh, following in this sense. We are taking the deposition of the witness. We will use it when the time comes. And if the prosecution wants the witness today, then they can talk about it. And I think we can use it after the Christmas break. Thank you, Mr. Chief Justice. Thank you, Your Honor. If we will delay, in fairness also to the defense, I will tell you that this might become one of the reasons why we will have the Senate and even the courts to become irrelevant. Thank you, Mr. Chief Justice. This time, wala na po ako magagawa. Ako na lamang siguro ang hindi magsasalita rito. Pero ngayon, I have to open my heart at tungkol dito sa pinag-uusapan nito, whether the witness should be presented today, agree po ako. Ilabas niyo po ang witness na yan. Salamat po. We have the police force intact. I think we can put together a security system that can provide the security that this woman or man needs and get the deposition. Otherwise, I'm willing to stay two days without sleep and just to go for the direct, the cross, the redirect, and the recross. That's fine with me. So it's all up to you. Thank you. Thank you, Your Honor. And uh, the position of the chair is to directly submit it to the body, to the floor, because of the apparent uh, the apparent uh, divisions of uh, opinions and ideas. Mr. Chief Justice, Chief Justice. the Honorable uh, Senator uh, Judge Caetano. A motion has been made uh, for a nominal voting. I second it. Mr. Chief Justice, the Honorable uh, Senator Judge I know Carter. if we have started the voting. Not already. yet, uh, Your Honor. I move for a suspension. It is a higher privilege, okay, a higher you priority. Mean, you mean a suspension of the session or a suspension, suspension of the Suspension of the session for a few minutes. We okay. object to the suspension, Mr. President. There is an objection to the suspension of the, uh, of, uh, the session. Uh, the matter will have to be submitted to a vote. You want a nominal voting on the motion to suspend or uh, only by raising of hands? So by raising of hands. As many as are in favor of the motion to suspend uh, the trial. For the purpose indicated, please raise your right hand. Secretary, please count. As many as are against the motion, say, please do the same. Just for the record. One, two, 
The motion is approved by a vote of 10-9. So suspended. Um, I am very pleased to uh, report to your honor that uh, there is a <coughs> unanimous consensus to allow the witness to be presented tonight, subject to um, cross by the defense if they would want to do that. Mr. Chief Justice. Disyembre 22, taong dalawang ibo, huling araw ng trial bago magpasko, nagulat na lang ang marami nang lumitaw ang isang surprise witness sa katauhan ni Clarissa Ocampo. Who affixed the signature of Jose Velarde on this document? The President uh, Joseph Ejercito Estrada affixed the signature. And how far away were you from him when he affixed the signature? I was one foot away. January 2, 2001. Sa muling pagbukas ng trial, ipinagpatuloy ni Clarissa Ocampo ang kanyang testimonya. I gathered all the documents and I went back to the bank and I typed Jose Velarde under his signature in the investment management agreement. That's all for the witness, Your Honor. The defense panel will not uh, cross-examine uh, Mrs. Clarissa Ocampo. Will not. It, uh, yes, it maintains its position that uh, her testimony is not covered uh, by the articles of impeachment. What prompted you to come to the Senate and testify? Um, there, were, there were actually uh, three reasons. No? When I, uh, when I saw the, the check that was presented on day one, that was uh, an equitable bank check, and bore the signature of Jose Velarde. So I thought to myself, but eventually I will come out because I can identify. That's one. But I have probably to wait for my turn. Um, the second is that um, I was concerned because of the fact that Attorney Chua saw me sometime the first week of December and uh, asked me about the documents and asked me what we're doing about it, etc. So in other words, they remember that I was there, I witnessed, and apparently after re reviewing all the transactions with the bank, there are probably just two of us who have actually witnessed you know, the, the the president sign Jose Velarde. So I was then afraid for my life and the security of my family. It is a real concern. And your third? And your three reasons? There was, um, there was actually an instruction to prepare a second set of documents. This, this was a uh, it was actually instructed by Mr. George Go. So he told me to prepare another set of investment management documents. And uh, because the principal had, I suppose, talked to him to, to, assign, no, to assign his rights and interest over the IMA to a certain Jaime de Chavez. The, the investment management agreement wa was signed in the office of Attorney Estelito Mendoza because of pollutions to myself by the witness, which affect my honor, my dignity, and my standing in the profession. I did not know why Mrs. Ocampo went there. I had no conversation with her about any trust agreement. I had absolutely no knowledge about this trust arrangement entered into by Jose Velarde or the bank. I never knew about this, and certainly, I was not present if there was any document at all signed while Mr. Go and Mr. De Chavez were in the office. You Mula noon, sunod-sunod pang mga testigo yeah, ang nagpatibay sa kaso ng prosecution laban ni Estrada. Yung uh, gross collection, yung sa Wetter Honor, 542,541,000. 
yung napunta sa Pangulong Strada. Eh, hindi po, excuse eh, siya, me. Siya po ang star, starring dito, kaya kailangan, bangkitin ko para maintindihan nyo yung honor. Ah, sige po, sige po. At, uh, Let the witness uh, finish the answer. Ito ang napunta kay Pangulong Strada, uh, po, po. 190 million, 300,000 yung cash na dinideliver ko every 15 days. Hindi ho, Your Honor, lililito niyo lang ako eh, kaya liniliwanag ko lang. Alam po ba ninyang timbang ng isang la libong piraso na papel de banko na gawa ng Central Bank? Hindi po, Your Honor. Isang kilo po. I have to correct my good friend, Your Enrile, hindi po isang kilo, kulang lang ko, Mr. Enrile, ng konti, sapagkat ako may timbangan ako ng manok. Akin, <laughs> medyo accurate, 96 grams per 1, per 1 million of 1,000 peso bill ang isa. Uh, in the course of uh, your performance of your duties as an associate of the law firm, De Borja, did you come across uh, these two corporations, namely uh, Pio Holding Corporation and Alexi Holding Corporation? Yes. <clears throat> And how did you come uh, to know these two corporations? I was asked um, to sign the incorporation papers of those two corporations. Who is his attorney, Serapio? He is one of the. He was one of the senior partners and founding partners of the law firm of uh, De Borja. The question is this. The usual career path is for a lawyer mm -hmm. to transfer from an office where he is already acclimated to another law office because of the incentive of a higher salary. But in your case, you deviated from that career path because according to you, you transferred from a law office with a higher salary to a law office with a lower salary. Is that correct? Yes. Remarkable. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you very much also. And so when you transfer from a higher paying job to a lower paying job, it is not necessarily an erroneous career decision, would this be correct? That's correct, Your Honor. In fact, it could be motivated by a sense of idealism. That's correct, Your Honor. Correct? That since law is not a business, but a noble profession, the question of compensation is not very material. That's true, Your Honor. I thought you had all the right answers. Thank you. <coughs> Mr. Thank Chief you. Justice, I beg the indulgence of Senator Judge Cayetano. This is a point of order. Uh, what's the point of order? I, I noticed that while Senator Rocco was in effect answering the point that I was raising when I was having the floor, after he made his point, a group of spectators in that part of the gallery went out of their way to stand out of their seats, deliberately violating the sign, which are very clearly pasted on our walls, saying, please remain seated just to look at me in a provocative way. May I request senators from now on to raise their questions with the witness and not try to initiate a debate or a colloquy with their own fellow senator. I would believe that the very barest essentials of protocol and etiquette dictates such behavior and conduct. And may I request the Chief Justice to discipline, at the very least to admonish and to reprimand this group that feels itself so high above the law that notwithstanding that the regulation is clearly presented in their direction, have deliberately went out have deliberately gone out of their way to provoke a judge into disturbing another senator judge and indeed the entire impeachment proceeding. I absolutely resent that actuation. And if necessary, I shall file a motion to cite these persons for contempt as soon as the pages can cooperate with me in identifying what their names and addresses are and asking the court as penalty to interdict them from ever crossing the threshold of the Senate Session Hall again. I most respectfully beg the Chief Justice to order the pages to get the names and addresses of those three individuals that I have handpicked and pointed to specifically. The uh, 
request is granted. And may I ask the Chief Justice, is it ethical behavior for a senator judge to wait for one senator judge to rise and try and make a point with a witness and then stand up and try and rebut that? Because then we would be in an adversarial position with each other if that is the case. I will therefore try and outweigh every other senator and try and blunt whatever point he or she is trying to make as well. May I seek clarification from the Chief Justice or from the Senate President if it is necessary. I understood that no colloquy would be allowed under the Senate impeachment rules. And I understand that I am being provoked to a colloquy. I have discovered a small black mic, Your Honor, which is directed at the uh, court, at the members of the Senate obviously to pick up our conversation between ourselves. Who uh, installed that? Who installed it? Channel uh, 7. Who, who told you to put that mic right there? Who instruct? Is there any specific instruction? Bali, sir, nung ano po namin, nung kasamaan po namin sa audio, sir, para raw ma-pick up nung avian sa ano, sa, dito sa loob ng court, sir. Para yung ambiance. Yes, sir. The question is, what is pag or share, if any, in the gross sales of bingo two balls? 23%, Your Honor. And who is entitled to collect this 23% of the gross sales of bingo two balls? Initially, we allowed prominent to collect this uh, pag or share, but eventually it uh, will be re remitted to pag or. You got the information also from the wetting lords, right? As far as the quota is concerned. For example, if the quota was 1 million in a particular area, this 1 million was a quota given by the wetting lords. No, actually, uh, that's the product of our study. Yes, the study, but who did you ask? Uh, that was conducted by a uh, prominent, Your Honor. So prominent asked whom? Uh, I'm not aware of those uh, because, circumstances, um, Your Honor. For example, in the areas of operation, the guys who got the um, license or the franchise were also involved in wetting. So if they declare to you, for example, a 1 million quota or 1.5 million quota, over the last 10 years, if they have been operating in the area like Magbujos or Viseo, etc., they would have known that their collection represented a bigger amount. So if they were already collecting, for example, 10 million, they will declare to you, or bigay mong quota sa amin, 1.5, for example, million. So that the free portion, which is the 8.5 million, or 9 million as the case may be, was no longer subject to a 23% remittance to PAGCOR. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. With the explanation and the preferred apologies of the GMA Channel 7, it is recommended that the incident complained of by Senator Judge Janus Peña be deemed closed and the microphone which was ordered confiscated by the presenting officer be returned to its owners. Uh, today we will begin with the paper trail, money trail pertaining to the 200 million released uh, the province of Ilocosur relating to the Republic Act 7171 excise tax. Can you please tell this honorable court what this is all about? Um, this is the notice of cash allocation being released by the Department of Budget and Management. Uh, this is being picked up by our head office. This check was the one given to us on August 26. Uh, for the account of the province of Ilocos Sur, Region 1, uh, in relation to the funding requirement of the establishment of a tobacco curing and redrying plan in Santa Ilocos Sur, uh, uh, for the account of uh, our vegan branch. Uh, this is the document we, use, we used uh, in um, transmitting the the funding to the uh, branches where the account should be transferred. I think, I think there's no issue at all about the release of 200 million pesos by the DBM to Ilocosur. Uh, the issue is whether a portion of this money was really diverted for an illegal purpose. That is the contentious portion of this point. But 
all others could be agreed upon. We can abbreviate this and deal with that uh, point where if there is any money that was diverted out of this 200 million so that we can finish this. Otherwise, if this is the way we are going to handle this case, we will not finish this until uh, 2001, uh, 2002. On August 27, 1998, there were two representatives of Governor Luis Chavez Singson, namely Ms. Mari Carpaz and Ms. Marina Atendido, who presented check number 97650 amounting to 170 million payable, payable to Governor Luis Chavez Singson in the amount of 170. And this check is signed by uh, the provincial treasurer. Mr. Gundran and the provincial governor himself, Luis Chavez Singson. I informed, I, I called the governor on August 28, 1998, and uh, I told the governor that the demand draft being issued by Vegan Branch is being canceled by the payees themselves. So the governor said, and I quote him, kung ano ang gusto nila, yun ang gawin mo. The matter of the cancellation of the checks, their substitution with demand drafts, and the subsequent replacement of these demand drafts with an interbank credit accommodation were all were instructions emanating either from Governor Singson himself or from his two assistants, Ms. Paz and Ms. Atendido. Yes, Your Honor. And the persons who had specifically identified, uh, who has been, had been identified as the recipient of these checks, namely Eliotario Tan, Alma Alfaro, and uh, Delia Rajas, were names identified either by Ms. Paz and Ms. Atendido or by Governor Simpson himself. Yes, Your Honor. Uh, Pakisabi nga po ng sa korte kung uh, ano itong account opening form at yung laman nito po? Ito po ay uh, signature card na nilagdaan, pinilapan ng isa po namin kliyente. Hmm. Sino yung kliyente na yun? Base po dito sa signature card, siya po ay si Alma A. Alfaro. Who were the other persons, if any, with Alma Alfaro when she arrived at your branch, Land Bank Show, on August 28, 1998? Kasama po ni Alma Alfaro, si Mr. Luterio Tan, at si Delia Rajas. Ms. Rajas is currently in the gallery. Can I ask you, with the permission of the court, to stand up and take a look at the gallery and tell us whether you recognize who Delia Ragas is, or Rajas is? Ms. Rajas, according to Attorney Fortune, is present in the gallery today at this very moment. Yes, Your Honor. And you are asking the witness to identify her. Is that correct? Yes. Wala po siya dito sa room na to. For the record, Your Honor, the witness was looking at the picture appearing in GGGGGG, which is the ID of one who purports to be Delia Rajas. So, uh, it is not a fair uh, process that the witness or that the uh, witness was required to go through, nor is it a fair uh, process that this counsel had this impeachment court go through. Because he, the witness was identifying the picture on the basis of the IDs presented. And now he says this is not the real Delia Rajas because the real Delia Rajas is the one whose records appear in the SSS, which is marked as another evidence. And no picture was in that uh, ID, or was in that SSS uh, paper. They asserted that this same Delia Rajas was the one who opened the account. Now they are telling us it is not. So it really misled the poor witness. That's terrible. That is a contempt of this court. I think, Mr. Fortun, you owe it to this court that you must identify if indeed uh, Ms. Ras, whom you say is here in this court, is actually 
here in this court. Otherwise, we will be forced to sanction you for misleading the members of this tribunal. Uh, Mr. Chief Justice, since this witness name was obli obviously used as the basis for a fake identification, is it all right for the judges to question this, uh, this new uh, uh, and original Delia Rahas? We can uh, let her take the uh, take an oath and uh, questions may be asked. Thank you, her. Mr. Chief Justice. Please state your name for the record. Ako po si Delia Rahas. Saan ka nagtatrabaho? Kay Mrs. Ang po. Ah, Mrs. Ang. Ito ba yung Catalina Ang? Opo. Ito yung nanay ni Atong Ang? Opo. And then in the box, uh, and the name is, uh, account name is Luisa P. Ejercito. Is this correct? Yes, Your Honor. Who filled up uh, this uh, information, uh, Mr. Witt? Uh, as far as we know, uh, it is the uh, authorized representative of the First Lady. Uh, Mr. Lim, uh, will you tell us, sir, whether you have any knowledge of the fact that these checks, whether that allegedly issued and deposited in the accounts of Mrs. Loy Estrada and that in Mr. Gachalian, William Gachalian's account, emanated from wetting? I have no idea that it came from Wedding Your Honor. In 1999, BW was one of the most popular, if not the most popular issue in the stock exchange. Its trading pattern was quite unusual. There was unusual price and volume movements. In fact, it rose meteorically in, in October 19, in 1999 and plunged shortly thereafter. We, we conducted the investigation to determine if this unusual price and volume movements was simply the result of free market forces or whether it was due to insider trading activities or price manipulation, Your Honor. You said that uh, you went to see the President. Where did you go? To Malacanian, Your Honor. I, I then tried to explain the results of the investigation, Your Honor. Um, I explained this in Filipino, Your Honor. Sinabi ko sa kanya na Pangulo, Lumalabas dito sa aming investigasyon na ang may kagagawan talaga ng manipulation sa stock market ay si Dan Titan. Marami kaming nakita ang mga transaksyon na kung saan gumamit sila ng iba-ibang paraan ng pandaraya at pandidin lang pag mamanipula sa stock market. At ito'y nangyari hindi lamang isa, dalawa, tatlo, apat, o limang beses. Daan-daan po ito mga transaksyon na ito kaya hindi natin po pwedeng baliwalain. After that, I was taken aback by what the President did, Your Honor. What was that? She suddenly sat up straight and said, At saka sabi sa akin ni Dante, yan si Asay, inayos na niya yan. Inayos na niya yan. And what was your reaction to the words and gesture that you heard? I was shocked. Here I was, facing the President of the Republic, the Chief Executor, the Chief Enforcer of the Laws. He was telling me that his friend had bribed the public official and yet he did nothing to take action either against the bribe giver or the bribe taker. Itong sign na ito sa inyo ay? Pera. Pera. Opo. Are you not involved in any sports activities? Uh, Mr. Almadro, Tony Almadro. I, I play golf uh, every once in a while. I, I jog every once in a while also. So uh, you would not have thought otherwise like, uh, I would like to look at your frame of mind because uh, in the international sign language, in uh, sports, in uh, practical shooting, in scuba diving, and in some military operations or uh, moves, this sign means okay. Pag ginan niya sa baba, yan ang pera. Ano ba? Pag dito, could be okay. Hindi ko po alam, pero po yung sinabi po ni President Estrada, in the context Ginayos of what he na. said, at saka yung sign niya, maliwanag po ng ibig sabihin, ay sinuhulan, di umano, ni Dante Tan, si Chairman Yasay. I But of course, that is your impression. He did not say anything that's, that would say, except that sign, that 
is an international sign or a sports sign or a military sign, okay. Before the start of the impeachment uh, trial, the Arab demolition crew sent to the editors of some newspapers documents about my investment in BW shares. I asked my esteemed colleagues in the defense to call on Mr. Tan to the witness stand so I can confront him. I also ask that you call the president, President Ejercito Estrada, Elias Jose Velarde, if you believe Mrs. Clarissa Ocampo's testimony. Because I know that he is the one behind this black propaganda against me, Mr. Chief Justice. Was it the first time that you met with the president on February 14, 2000? Yes, Your Honor. Was that the first time that you ever had a conversation with the President? With President Estrada? Yes. Yes, Your Honor. On your oath as a lawyer and as an officer of the court, and on your oath as a witness, did President Estrada ever contact you at any time during your, during your investigation regarding the subject matter of the investigation? No, Your Honor. But I'm just, my statement is very simple. That while the, the witness was testifying, another, another future witness or named witness was in this hall. And um, if the prosecution insists that he wasn't, then I want that open and I want, the issue ch uh, I want to take this issue up, um, uh, the, the court to take this issue up. Yes, uh, our, our word here may not be as strong as the word of a judge uh, senator, but what happened actually here is towards the close of the testimony of Mr. Almadro, the prosecutor who will be presenting him, Congressman Rodriguez, called for him to be prepared already here, Your Honor. That was what I understand. I did not even notice that myself. I think it's rather unfair for um, uh, Congressman uh, Prosecutor uh, Gonzalez to just simply consider that, of course, the word of a senator judge is far stronger than the prosecution lawyer. I mean, I think that if they're going to lie about it, or they're going to deny it, or try to wiggle and wangle their way out of it, then they cannot do it with me. Your witness was in this room. And I'm not going to take any other comment I'm that, just that, that's ex trying to explain, because you're a lawyer, that I am not telling the truth. I'm not saying, Your Honor, please, that you're not telling the truth. So your witness I was here. Saying, Why don't you just admit that your witness was in this hall? I did not see that witness here. Well, you don't have to see time. him. You don't have to see a witness in this hall to, uh, to, uh, uh, for, for him to be in this hall. Just because you don't see him in this hall, that doesn't mean he doesn't exist. And I'm not going to take that from anyone, not even if you're a lawyer or a congressman. I, 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 I mean, he was caught I'm by sorry, the television cameras. I'm still talking, excuse me. He was caught by the TV cameras, by Channel 2 and by Channel 7. And just because you didn't see it, millions of people out there did. At pagkatapos na ipakita ninyo ay isplika ito at ipakita sa ating mahal na presidente, anong nangyari pa kung meron man? Uh, Binabasa po niya. Uh, and I remember he got uh, interested in two words. Sabi niya something like kiting and wasail. No? Uh, Inulutu niya yung binasa niyo. Uh, pagkatapos, so, sabi niya, uh, bakit hindi sinabi sa akin ni Tanti Tanto? Uh, may problema para siya. Uh, sabi niya, siya pa ang nalugi dito. Siya ang uh, biktima. Uh, meron pa siya ang sinabi, which was uh, a little bit uh, surprising to me, Your Honor. Ano yung surprising na sinabi sa iyo ng ating presidente pagkatapos niyang sabihin walang hiya si Chairman Pagkatap Yasay? Pagkatapos niya sabihin na uh, walang hiya talaga yan, uh, sinabi niya at saka ayon kay Dante, eh, ayos na si Yasay. Hiningi po ba niya na pagbigyan ninyo o paboran niyo si Mr. Dante Tan hinggil doon sa investigasyon na ginawa ng CSG ng PSE? Ang words na sinasabi lang, o oh, ay kaibigan, patagal lang tumutulong sa akin yan. And at the later part, nung third call na sinabi niya, hindi nag-investiga ang SEC. 
kayo na lang. So, paki-expedite na ho yan. Oo, oh, expedite. Pero hiningi po ba niya na maliwanag sa inyo na uh, ginoong Pangulo ng PSC, eh, paboran niyo naman sa investigasyon ninyo o iklaro naman ninyo ang Dun ikatulo sa, o si Mr. Dante Dan? Doon po sa fourth call, ay eh, sinabi niya uli na uh, kung pwede expedite nga daw. Expedite? Ang gusto po sabihin na expedite, pabilisan ang investigasyon. Hindi, hindi po ba yun? Uh, meron din siya sinabing tapusan na natin, bahala ka na dyan. O, Kaya po, uh, nap napagitan po akong sumugod doon at sinabi ko na sa kanya na Mr. President, I understand what you are telling me, naintindihan ko sinasabi niyo, pero alam niyo, hindi ako nag-imbestiga. Ang nag-imbestiga po niyan ay ang CSG. Kaya magagawa ko na lang po na pag natapos yung kanilang investigasyon, ay ipaaalam ko sa inyo kaagad ang resulta. That was my way of respect in answering what he was trying uh, to ask me to do. Your Honor. I guess in the excitement of uh, the President with regards to the absurds of uh, the BW shares, binanggit po niya sa akin in Tagalog na malaki na ang kinikita ko dito sa BW shares. That at 10.30 this morning, uh, in my office received a letter threatening death on my part with a bullet. I really do not mind receiving death threats. Yes, I fear for my life, just like anyone else. I only hope that magpunin lang idadamay ang aking mga pamilya sapagkat wala po silang kasalanan. Ang sagot po ng uh, Presidente ng PNB, hindi lang po report Ito pong law na ito was uh, granted at the initiative of the President of the Republic. Eh yun tungkol sa smuggling sa Bureau of Customs. Mabigat po rito eh, eh napakaraming mga tao na nakikita ko naman po sa, sa mga social activities at kung minsan po sa Malacanang na nasa mga listahan ng mga involved po sa smuggling. Kanina po sa tanong ni Senator Flavier, sinabi mo na may mga tao kang nakikita sa Malacanang na nasa listahan ng mga smuggler. Sino po ito? What's the answer, the witness? Eh. All right. Mahirap po sagutin dahil... Uh, oh, sige, hindi, ma... kita, hindi kita pipiliting sagutin. Talang... Oh. Medyo, medyo risky po yan ah, all right. Sige, <laughs> sa buhay. Eh. Oh. I would ask or request my nephew to answer the question of the law. With indulgence to my father-in-law. Well, first of all, the, we should not make it a family affair. <laughs> Mr. Chief Justice, I really do not want to intrude into especially family affair. But perhaps we may all be forgetting that we are trying an impeachment case against President Strada. And uh, all of these questions on this matter of who this smuggler is, I think has taken all of perhaps more than 30 minutes. And I do not think that it is uh, relevant to these proceedings. So exercising the prerogative given to defense counsel, I would like to object to the question on the ground of relevancy. In connection with your investigation, of the BW resources between the period October 14 or 15 to the end of November 1999. Uh, you remember having received telephone calls from the President? Yes, Your Honor. In fact, I said earlier that uh, the President called me sometime on October 18, and then a few days thereafter, he called me again, also on the BW matter, and he called me a third time and a fourth time, and a fifth time, Your Honor. What were actually taken up during these calls? The President told me that fourth call, Kinausap ko na si Mr. Yulo. Again, the tone of his voice was angry. And, wha and what he about told me, uh, at tumayag na siya sa lahat ng sinabi ko. So sabihin mo kay Mr. Yulo, na kung hindi niya ako susundin dito, siya ang kawawa rito. Kaya, Bilis-bilis na niyong investigasyon, you clear Dante Tan, you clear BW, I'm giving you three days, and I'm banking on you. You coordinate with Mr. Yulo.
that evening when I was called upon to attend that interview, I had to make those statements that I did. But, Your Honor, when Senator Rocco reconvened or resumed the hearing at the Senate Committee at that time, he asked me, on the basis of what you've said in so far as media reports, are you going to change your statements here at the Senate today that you made the last hearing? And I told him, no, Your Honor, the statements I made at the last hearing were the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, and I will not change it. Tumating ang araw ng Enero at isisahis taong dalawang libo at isa. To help the nation, Your Honor. Yung huling araw ng impeachment tayo, hindi namin talaga inaasahan na gano'n yung magiging kalalabas na nun. Dahil unang-una, nagsimula yung araw na yun na very boring ang discussion dahil ang testigo nun isang abogado, sinasabi lang niya yung uh, mga investigasyon niya sa Arab Muslim Youth Foundation. So kami nun, parang gusto na namin matapos yung araw kasi puha namang walang pinupuntahan yung tanungan. Ngunit ang ordinaryong araw na yon ay naging makabuntong hininga. Nagpa siya ang presiding officer na si Chief Justice Hilario Davide na bigyan daan ang mga argumento para sa pagbubukas ng pangalawang sobre ng dokumento mula sa Equitable PCI Bank. Ito ay tungkol sa mga deposito sa banko ni Jose Velarde na di umanoy walang iba kung hindi si Pangulong Estrada. The court uh, has decided to call the parties to oral argument uh, on the following issues. One, the opening of the second envelope. Ang uh, feeling ko nun, wala naman siguro magiging problema. Second. Lahat kami ina-expect namin mabubuksan yung second Objection. envelope. Kasi kung pinayagan nila si Clarissa Ocampo, number one, na mag-testify, hindi naman siguro malayo na payagan din na buksan yung second envelope. In the first place, nabuksan na yung first envelope. As far as the second envelope is concerned, if you're honest, please. If the papers in the first envelope are the predicates for the opening of the second envelope, that predicate does not exist because the papers which were found in the second envelope have that been marked as exhibits much less established as belonging to the president. Would, that, uh, would not these charges be read in the context of the Constitution? What we are discussing really is whether subpoena Jose Teco may be issued in regard certain bank accounts. That is how you read it. But under that, that the is, that the is the paper, issue. yes. That is the how you read it, but that is not how others may read it. There's too much complaint about the way the complaint has been drafted. True. This could have been done better. True, it could have been worded better. Fact is, this was prepared by cost-oriented groups, prepared by non-governmental organizations, prepared by trade union people. At the time that the complaint, impeachment complaint was filed, there was no Senate rule that could guide the complainers. Nothing at all. How can the defense now egg on the Senate to say, this complaint is no good. When at the time that this was, that this was prepared, there was no set of tools to guide us. Why is it that the Honorable Prosecutor Congressman Joker Arroyo, since you know so much about it, why don't you just bring out all your information and why do you want us to open the envelope? You already know any, everything about it anyway. Because sir, it would be inadmissible. What would be admissible would be that account that well, we have uh, requested be subpoenaed. That is the difference. You want to correct by a bill of particulars a matter that ought to be the subject of an amendment to the pleadings that the House submitted to this court for trial. The difference between uh, the bill of particulars, it is, is the motion is made by the other party. The yes. amendment is made by the other party to put to make a point. Uh, wait, wait. Just a complainant may be ordered to amend the complaint. No, Your Honor. Read uh, Rule 10. No, if, you do, if you do not know it, I'll read it to you. Do you understand Rule 6 to mean that the charges 
are also to be liberally construed. Well, that is what the Senate rules say. No. no. Rules of evidence and procedure shall be liberally construed. We're talking of evidence here. Therefore, it should be liberally construed. We're talking of evidence here. We're Admissibility, materiality. That is evidence. Yes. But are the charges to remain frozen and firm, or are they to be a work in progress which might, must grow from time to time? I beg to disagree. This is not work in progress. We're not in waiting while we are here. Well, I can't argue on a legal point with a non-lawyer. Well, uh, regrettably, uh, <laughs> we are simply in the field of logic. That's the refuge of the uninitiated. You're trying to say, uh, Mr. Prosecutor, is that the, the Senate tries the President only on the offenses for which he has been impeached? Yes, sir. And those the are what has appear been in the Articles of Impeachment. The President has been impeached by the House under the Articles of Impeachment. Precisely. Uh, the ultimate facts are as stated in the Articles, that's not correct. as stated in the press. Oh, that's an insinuation. Okay. I again yeah. take offense in that. But never mind. Let no offense the, was intended. Let us let stay on the record because that reflects on the judge. We owe it to the nation. We owe it to the Filipino. We owe it to the millions who are now listening to grant this simple request. Buksan natin yung sobre upang malaman kung ano talaga ang nakalagay dyan. Na hindi po maaaring ikulong ang katotohanan dahil lamang sa teknikalidad. We talk of discovering the truth. There are people in this chamber who do not know the meaning of truth. And it would have been totally different if there had been no TV cameras in this hall. Can we bring that evidence to prove his guilt under Article 1? I think if I may appeal to my colleagues, we are the ones now being judged. It's the chamber. As we vote on this, we shall be judged. And I hope we, and I have the highest regards. And whenever I am asked by Mitya, I keep saying I have the highest expectations from my colleagues. And I hope that that expectation will be met and approved and accepted by the Filipino people. Our job here is to ferret out the truth. The people deserve nothing less than to know the truth. Payagan po natin malaman ng taong bayan ang katotohanan sa pagbukas po ng pangalawang dokumento. Pag may na technical ho rito, ang taong bayan po na technical. And therefore, Mr. Chief Justice, I move that we open the envelope and even accept on condition in the same manner that we open the first envelope and we allowed Clarissa Ocampo to testify. Kaya nga po, aking hinihiling sa aking mga kapasenador na may obligasyon po tayo na makita natin ang katotohanan. May obligasyon po tayo na ang ating mahal na institusyong Senado ay ating mabigyan ng tinatawag na magandang reputasyon at wag mabahiran ng tinatawag na dungis. I cannot and will not allow this court, Mr. Chief Justice, to be used wittingly or unwittingly by the prosecution in its fishing expedition to the detriment of our country's economy. Envelope number two is relevant and material in our quest for truth. Envelope number two is relevant and material for the credibility of this proceeding. Re envelope number two is relevant and material for the credibility of this institution. Envelope number two is relevant and material to the faith of our people in this democracy. If you will be able to look at yourself in the morning and say, you have done good to the country and for your people, then you have respected yourself. I intend that, together with the rest of my colleagues, whom I hope will do likewise, 
I intend to vote out of a sense of the shared destiny of the Filipino people. Whether we open the envelope, the second envelope or not, that truth cannot be suppressed to the Filipino people. Uh, the majority leader. I move that we now put this to, to a vote, a record. I second the motion, Mr. Chief Justice. Hindi namin naasahan na magbobotahan, pero nagulat lang din kami nung biglang tumayo na si Senator Tata at sinabi niya na to... put it to a vote. Kasi parang inisip namin nun, hindi ba dapat si Chief Justice Davido na yung mag-decide kung mabuksan o hindi. The Chair would like to motor property order suspension for 10 minutes. There was a break. Pumwesto ako dun sa may railing kung saan dumadaan yung mga Senator. Tamang-tama yung unang dumaan na Senator, si Senator Ople. So, tinanong ko na siya, Senator, how are you going to vote? Open or don't open the envelope? Yun ang tandang exact words na tinanong ko sa kanya. Sabi niya, open, open, open ako. May tali na kami actually, hindi pa nagbabotahan. 11-10 na. 11 in favor of not opening the envelope. Mga katabi ko kasi puro mga reporters ng Jario. Meron na silang mga ano, forecast how the senators will vote. Ang bilang nila, 10 will vote for the opening. 11 will vote na wag buksan. So, alam nila, talo yung opening. Pero nung sinabi sa akin ni Ople yun, na bago yung, yung boto, yung bilang, in best na 10-11 in favor of not opening, 11-10 in favor of opening na. Si Teddy Casino, kasama well, uh, ko ngayon dito. Uh, Teddy? Good evening po. Good evening. Mm -hmm. uh, nung, nung, nung na kami nag-usap last Sunday, uh, napag-usapan lang yung mga complainants and the private prosecutors. Mm -hmm. Pero kaninang hapon, pati yung buong gallery mukhang sasama na. Mm -hmm. so, nagbubulungan kanina pa doon. Okay. And uh, very crucial kasi yung vote. So, ang, ang feeling talaga ng mga tao, is that if we lose in this uh, vote, uh, walk out na muna at uh, mag-usap muna kami sa labas kung ano bang gagawin. Nakita ko rin si, ano, si Teddy Casino ng bayan. Tapos may kausap siya. Sinasabi niya, mag-walk out kami pag natalo yung opening. Roll call vote. Honorable Senator Judges, Aquino Areta, Barbers, Biazon, Slowly, slowly, please. Cayetano, Coseteng. Defensor Santiago. Drilon. Enrile. Clavier. Gingona. Honasan. Jaworski. Nagulat na yung ako. After the break, bigla yung nagbotohan, tinawag Senator Ople. Ople. Sabi niya, no. Ha? Tinagulat ako. Sabi ko, ano nangyari? Bakit nagbago siya? Osmeña John. Osmeña Seri III. Revilla. Rocco. Soto III. Tatad. Sabi namin, this is going to be a defining moment. Parang magiging turning point ito. The Senate President. May I explain my vote? The Senate President may explain his vote. I vote to open the second envelope. I vote to do so because that is the only way to determine whether or not the contents of the envelope are relevant or material to the case at bar. Because of this development, uh, Mr. Chief Justice, I realize that the no's have it, and therefore I resign my presidency of the Senate as, as soon as my successor is elected. When Senator Pimentel... Let us first announce uh, the... ...nagpitiw siya ng... Hindi ko akala... Hindi ko... Yung bang immediately nakita mo yung parang prinsipyo niya, you know, that this is not the Senate that I want to lead or something about nakaka-impress. Ten yes votes. And 11 no votes. The no votes have it. Bilang nyo narinig ko na 11 senators voted against the opening of the envelope. Naku, paano yun? Tapos pagsilip ko yung mga tao, ano ba yan? Dismayado, dismayado yung mga tao sa loob at saka sa labas. Let's go. 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 Let's go.
tapos yung maliit na lugar na yun, doon parang kompleto na yung emosyon eh. Makikita mo uh, may mga nagagalit, merong mga, merong mga patago na siguro dismayado din, pero lumakad lang sila palabas, merong nagpapalaktakan, merong yung mga senador nag-uusap, makikita mo yung isang senador na sumayo pa. Pero hindi ko yung nakala na on a larger scale, on a, on a larger scope, talagang ito yung magiging effect. Outraged, you felt betrayed. Talagang betrayed na sino ba itong mga tao ito na ayaw pakita yung, yung katotohanan? Sa kanilang mga amo. Hindi ba tayo ang mga amo ng mga, itong mga senador na ito? So it was really one, it was really anger more than anything else. Na at at kailangan, we must do something about it. Hindi pwede natin pabayaan ito. At that time, ang nakita ko lang, hindi nabubuksan yung envelope. Saan tayo pupunta from here? Parang medyo nawalan ako ng pag-asa ng konti. Parang nangyari na nanonood ka ng sine o kaya ng telenovela, nag-brown out. Hindi mo tuloy alam kung ano yung katapusan. So nabitin yung tao. Sana naman lahat ng mga tao ngayon, Huwag na kayong maniwala kay Erap. Isang kriminal sa Malacanang, inyong pang in-exonerate na yun. Papilang ayaw pang buksan. That means he is guilty. 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 Ako na yung natin ko na, ano yung nangyari sa labas? baka ko ano ang gawin nila, baka mag-revolusyon. Yun na talaga yung, yung naisip ko na natatakot ako na baka mag-revolusyon. Bali mo uh, hindi nabuksan yung second envelope, nakatanggap kami ng tawag dito sa newsroom na uh, nagsimula na nga yung noise barrage. Nag-stay kami sa kanto ng Timog at EDSA. Tapos doon nga, meron ng uh, bonfire. Tapos may mga ilan na, na mga civilian na nag-gather doon. Tapos uh, nag-busina lang sila ng busina. So at that point, parang kinilabutan ako dahil parang yun yung napapanood lang sa TV ng araw, yung civil disobedience against former uh, President Ferdinand Marcos. So parang feeling ko something big was going to happen that night. After a few minutes, nakatanggap kami ng uh, report na si Cardinal Sindao at si former President Cory Aquino pupunta na sa Edsa Shrine. 